He's back after eight years of hiatus. What's life outside of the spotlight been for you the last eight years? Just pretty much typical everyday life, you know. Um, it's actually been really good to step away from music, that kind of thing. So you've had no involvement in music? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, music's always a big part of my life okay. and Marinos as well. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, we uh, definitely, I mean, it would probably only take up maybe 30% of my time compared to when we were doing the band full time. It's Perfect. like all in. Sure. You know? Yeah, Yeah. cool. So now it's like 2024. Loads of bands are coming back this year. Um, you know, we've had Graves, one of them, another like good Australian bands come back, and now you guys are back in the spotlight. What is it that's kind of sparked this comeback, and and why now? We were so Kim and I have written music for the last eight years, on and off mm -hmm. with Sharks, but we kind of we kind of thought, you know, it, it's been called a day where we're done with it, and then. We got a call from a friend looking for a band to support Killswitch. Mm. And from there, it kind of went, well, now's a better time than any. You know, we, we thought <sighs> Killswitch Engage, I mean, the, the band that kind of started the genre. Mm. Um, if they want to support and we can do it, we might as well jump into it. So that kind of just like reignited a bit of the flame and... To be honest, it was kind of like, well, well, we'll just see how this goes, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll have a kind of like a warm-up show and, and, and see what happens. So it was kind of that that really ignited what's going to happen in the future. Prior to that phone call from your friend, mm. had you know, the itch to play live music again kind of been there? Or? We always thought that maybe we'd play another show or two, mm. uh, but it kind of... We've been saying that for the last eight years, yeah. you know, so this was the kind of thing that kind of ignited the flame a bit. Totally. Obviously, there's been a few lineup changes. Andy isn't coming back, as I'm, as I'm sure. Yeah. Um, who have we got filling in? So if you saw us in Europe and America in 2016, we had our friend Sean Core from Brisbane. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he filled in for those two tours and um, anyone who saw us can probably agree he did a great job. So mm -hmm. he's going to be doing these shows. The future of the band is yet to be seen. Sure. You yeah, know, sure. Um, this is kind of a bit of a trial run, to be honest. Yeah, okay. To, to, to see what's going to happen. Yeah, okay. Well, it's um, interesting because, like, you know, it's been eight years since you guys have been active, yet, um, you know, there's always, like, those, those threads online where, like, if you could bring one back one band, which would it be? And Feeders to the Sharks always pops up. I mean, you guys yeah. have kind of created this cult following over the years. Is that kind of surreal to think that, you know, you've had such a massive impact in... Australian music on a global scale? It's definitely pretty surreal to think about it. Like, I mean, when we did the first album in 20, 2010 or 2009 was when I was writing it, it was like, you know, you're just a kid playing riffs and you're just trying to, you know, make stuff that you think sounds cool. And to be honest with you, we've always been that kind of band in the scene that's like, we've never sort of been as like popular as a lot of our peers, mm. but to sort of look back on it now and see, like we did an AMA on Reddit a while back as well, and to see like a lot of people actually sort of really still love all the stuff that we wrote back, you know, what, over 10 years ago now mm. is crazy, so yeah. yeah. How do you guys have kept going? Is might even be like as big as some of the bands like Parkway Drive. Do you are you content with you know the decisions that have been made to go through the hiatus, or would you change anything if you could? Um, I mean, it was kind of unavoidable to be honest with you. You know, it was like there's so much more in being in a band than just you know releasing stuff and touring. You know, there's like everything else that goes with it, the business side of it, all mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So. Um, to ask if we could change something, um, you could always look back and be like, oh, we should have done this, we should have done that. But as well as that, it's also like, we've been able to tour the world, we've been able to, you know, release three full-length albums that we're very proud of. No, I don't reckon I'd change anything in terms of the band, personally. Yeah, yeah, cool. uh, how about you? Yeah, like uh, Kim said, it was a bit of a forced hiatus, in a way. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's funny to look back, like you said, looking online and everything like that, it's... Because when the band, you know, kind of fell away, we, we kind of didn't look at it for a while. It was, we, we had other things to look at and, and, you know, we were just doing our lives. And then, yeah, every now and then we'd jump on Reddit or YouTube or something like that and just see threads about people. Oh, I miss this band. I like this band. So, I don't know, I don't know if the hiatus 
kind of worked in our favor a little bit mm. because it kind of drove people to be like, oh, this band's over. I wish they would come back. And then people looking at that and being like, who is this band? So arguably now our following is bigger than ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe ahead of our time. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, which makes it the perfect time to come back, right? Yeah. 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 Totally. Well, you know, as you said earlier, you spent the last eight years kind of on and off writing music. What direction has these tunes kind of gone in? Are they like the traditional kind of fetish of the shark sound or is it a bit of a spanner in the works? There's obviously elements. I think uh, Kim and I have grown as musicians and uh, just kind of, I mean, we, we still, you know, we still listen to music. We have a studio basically at our house that we, we work on and all different kinds of music. So I think uh, obviously it's still heavy. It's still metal, but I think we've, yeah, developed as songwriters and I don't know, sometimes listening back to the old songs, it can be a bit like, oh, it sounds not not immature, but I would say that um, it was a, a bit of a time stamp. Mm -hmm. And now, obviously, we're in 2024, so metal has evolved, the music scene has evolved. So I would like to think that our songs have evolved with it. Yeah, nice. Are there any like Australian artists that you guys have a keen eye on that like maybe weren't around when you guys were active mm -hmm. that you kind of want to pair up with and do shows with or but tour with? There's just there's so many good bands yeah, coming out of Australia, like, oh, you know. The scene is thriving here. It is. Yeah. It, it's crazy. Like I could probably list forty or fifty of the the top bands around. I mean, obviously guys like, I mean you see like Alpha Wolf are, are killing it. Um, Mitch who plays drums in there played drums for us over in the um, Euro tour. So oh, no, wow, I've they? got to, yeah yeah yeah. So I have a soft spot for him and mm. and everything he does. Um, you know, I mean, obviously the guys like Norfane and stuff like that are, are absolutely killing it these days. So, I mean, we'd just be happy to mm. play shows with with any of uh, any of the good bands around. Yeah. Um, you know, like with everything that Melbourne's kind of been through in the last eight years, we you know with COVID and, and all, all that sort of going. Well, like, what's your what's your thoughts on Melbourne these days? I mean, it's still the best city in the world yeah, okay. for sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's definitely changed since that. Like, so your song. Fuck Melbourne was a bit of a piss tag in a sense. Yeah, I guess so. Like, at the time, we definitely wrote it to be like, you know, we were kind of like maybe a little bit salty that like we weren't, that we were sort of touring around the world and we weren't getting much recognition in our home city. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I guess that w might be sort of along the lines of what that song might have been about. Mm. If, if you know, th these first few shows are successful, mm. do you plan to kind of get back into the swing of like, worldwide touring and kind of give those fans the dedicated fans overseas like a, a treat i mean life's changed a lot since mm. we stopped the band you know so like maz said before we're doing this as a bit of a trial run mm. for sure um but you're not closing the door to it we're not closing the door to it yeah. that's for sure yeah, uh, we've got new material stuff like that that we want to test out uh there's a lot of shit we got to do before we can really think about touring again mm. but i'm not cancelling it out that's for sure mm -hmm. but at the same time it's like we can't promise anything totally. you know we don't want to let the fans sort of down by saying oh yeah we're going to be doing this 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 and this so mm. i think we're being pretty transparent about everything at this stage for yeah sure. yeah i think as well when you're younger your priorities are different mm. and back then it was fine to spend all our money and live in a van and do that kind of thing kind of slog it for a bit so i think that the situation has to be right um which the right situation can come along so we're definitely not cancelling it out um but we haven't been i guess we haven't been extremely proactive to kind of build it up to kind of what it was mm. um so yeah we're just gonna take it as it comes yeah, cool. All right, well, I might finish up on this, but do you have any last thoughts of fans in Melbourne, Australia, or anywhere else around the world? We appreciate all your support. Uh, like I said before, it's crazy to see um, when you go online and stuff like that, that people are still, you know, putting our name out there and tagging us and sharing our stuff. It is kind of surreal to see. I'm proud of what we accomplished in that time. And I guess without the fans, we wouldn't have done that. So... Big ups to everyone still listening. And um, yeah, we appreciate you. Yeah.